In our concept check, in the function equation f of 4 equals negative 5, the input value is 4, the output value is negative 5, and another way to write the result is y equals negative 5, or we could write when x equals 4, y equals negative 5, because that does give us more information about what's happening, x equals 4, y equals negative 5. We could even write an ordered pair 4 comma negative 5. Any of those are alternative ways of writing the answers to a function. Be careful if you're working on your homework. Make sure you enter it the way that they want you to enter it. So if they just want that output value, only put negative 5. In the next section, find the indicated values for each function. Express answers using correct function evaluation notation. So we're going to practice this idea of plugging in a number for x, simplifying, and getting an answer. In our first example, f of x equals 4x minus 7. So we're going to first start out and find f of negative 3. Since negative 3 is replacing the x, I'm going to put a parenthesis where the x is, and then I'll come back and replace in that parenthesis the x value that I'm evaluating, negative 3. And now we can multiply it out. This is an expression, so we're, we're simplifying which is why I'm going to continue this equal sign. I have this piece here, and I need to figure out what it equals on down the road. I'm not solving an equation. I'm evaluating a function, okay? So even though there are equal signs here, and it looks like an equation, do not divide by negative 3. We're not multiplying. We're evaluating. So we'll start out 4 times negative 3 is negative 12, minus 7, and then negative 12 minus 7, negative 19. We can repeat this with f of 0, so I'm going to move over so I have more room. f of 0, 4 times x minus 7, I'll plug in the 0 here in for x. 4 times 0 is 0, 0 minus 7 is negative 7. If I plug in 3 fourths, f of 3 fourths, 4x minus 7, 3 fourths will go there. This one makes it nice because I can cancel the fours out, working with my rational expressions. And I end up with 3 minus 7, which will give me negative 4. It's perfectly fine to use that calculator to help you out with the calculations. Taking a look at part B with g of x equals x squared minus 5x. I'll start out with my skeleton g of x equals x squared minus 5x. I call this a skeleton because it's got the bare bones of my function. And I can take the value that I'm evaluating and I plop that value in all of the parentheses. So I'm going to put in negative 2 into all of the parentheses. It's just another way to think about evaluating to create this skeleton that then you can plug in the numbers. So negative 2 squared, that comes down to negative 2 times negative 2, which will give me a positive 4. Be careful with those negatives. Negative 5 times negative 2 is positive 10. So 4 plus 10 will give me 14. Repeating for 0, let's make our skeleton. Plug in 0 for x, 0, 0, 0. 0 squared is 0. 5 times 0 is 0. 0 minus 0 is 0. And we've got one more. We'll take use of our calculator on this one. g of 0.4. I'll create the skeleton. Plug in 0.4 into all of the parentheses. 0.4 times 0.4. It's okay to pull out that calculator. 0.165 times 0.4 is 2. 0.16 minus 2 will give me negative 1.84. It's okay to work with decimals. We got this. And then part C, we have a rational function. We just finished our chapter on rational expressions and rational equations, but we absolutely can talk about rationals in the context of functions. So here we go. Let's create our skeleton. I'll plug in negative 4 first, and then we simplify. Negative 4 minus 2 will give me negative 6. 
negative 6 divided by negative 4, the negatives are going to cancel. 6 and 4 have a common factor of 2 in them. So 6 and 4, if I cancel out that common factor, I'll get 3 halves. If I look at h of 0, when I try to plug in 0 here, what happens? I get a 0 in the denominator. Remember, that's bad. H of 0 is undefined. What this ultimately means is 0 is not in the domain for our function h here. Because x equals 0 makes that denominator 0, which makes the expression undefined, 0 is not in the domain. And then our last one, h of 2. We can plug in our 2's into the skeleton. 2 minus 2 is 0. Here we have 0 on the top. Is that bad? No, 0 divided by 2 is just 0. Awesome job. Keep up the good work. In number 3 here, we're just going to take this function g of x and evaluate it at these three different values for x. So we'll take g of x, x squared minus 5x. I think we did two of these already because this g of x is the exact same g of x as what's in b, x squared minus 5x. Negative 2, we got 14, and 0, we got 0. So we can go ahead and put these in. Negative 2, we ended up with 14. 0, we got 0. Let's try x equals 3. So 3 in for all the parentheses. 3 squared is 9. 5 times 3 is 15. 9 minus 15 is negative 6. Then it says write the table entries as a set of ordered pairs. So ordered pairs, set, we're going to have a curly brace. Ordered pair, we write x comma y. And we're going to correspond the x and the y together in the rows. And that would be our set of ordered pairs. We don't have to know the rule for the function in order to state the function values in function notation. Functions can be described as a table, a graph, a set of ordered pairs, verbally or symbolically. We can use all of these descriptions to find function values. So let's look at other ways we can explore evaluating functions. Here we have a table in number four. To find the indicated function values, use the table. Here we have our input x and our output g of x or y. Remember, y equals the function notation. So if I'm looking for g of negative 2, I want to find, remember normally x would sit here, I want to find negative 2 in the x part of the table. In this case, x is in the first row. So I want to find negative 2. And then I look below that to find the output. g of negative 2 is negative 7, according to the table. I can do the same thing with a g of 1. I find x equals 1 in the table. Notice I'm on the x row for this one. x is 1, so then g of x would be 8. Similarly, we can look at sets of ordered pairs to find the function values. Here we have our function f defined as ordered pairs. We're going to play the same type of game. Negative 3 is an x value, so we need to look in the ordered pairs and find an x value that equals negative 3. Ah, right here in the beginning. The y that corresponds to that x value is 5. Try f of 0 and f of 2 on your own. Pause the video. When we resume, we'll work through it together. Did you find f of 0? 0 here. I'm looking for 0 on the x part of my ordered pairs, the first part, and I see that 0 corresponds to 5. That's okay, we can repeat the y values. We just cannot repeat the x values and still have a function. f of 2, 2 is my x, so I look for an ordered pair that has 2 in the front, and I see that 2 corresponds to negative 3. Let's take a look at using a graph now to find a function value. This takes a little more practice and a little more patience with yourself. So feel free to take that patience, give yourself a little bit of grace, and just keep practicing. Just like before, that negative 2 that's inside the parentheses is an x value. x normally sits here, so I'm going to look on the x-axis and locate negative 2.
then I need to find the ordered pair that's on the graph that has negative 2 as its x coordinate. I can draw a line on x equals negative 2. It's going to be a vertical line. And I find out where does it hit the graph. Well, it hits the graph right here. And I trace it over onto the y-axis. And I see that that y-axis value is negative 4. So f of negative 2 is negative 4 because this point right here is the ordered pair negative 2, negative 4 on the graph. So let's try another one together. I'll use a different color. f of 0. 0 on the x-axis is right here in the middle where it crosses the y-axis. So we're going to color the y-axis all the way down. This is all the values where x equals 0. And then I look to see where does that green line intersect with my graph. Well, right here at negative 1. So this ordered pair is 0, comma, negative 1. My y value that goes with 0 will be negative 1. Then I need to find f of 2. So let's use purple this time. x equals 2. Here's x equals 2 on the x-axis. I need to find where it hits the graph, where the graph has a x-coordinate of 2. And it's right here. 2, comma, trace it over, 2. We're finding the y values that go to the x values. So f of 2 is 2. Take a moment and try b on your own. And when you resume, I'll have the answers for you. All right, part b, graph of the function g. This nice little curvy shape. We're going to learn a lot about this nice little curvy shape. It's called a parabola. Pretty cool little shape. g of negative 1 turns out to be negative 2. We got this ordered pair right here. G of 0 is negative 3, that little ordered pair right there. And then G of 2 is 1. Again, it takes practice. So if you need to rewatch stuff, rewind, watch it again, practice on your own until you think you've got it.